If you've ever been to Malaysia, or maybe Thailand, or Costa Rica, or Sri Lanka, you know. You know the grip that certain local monkeys have on the community. You've experienced what it's like to live under a ruthless regime. Sometimes called the monkey mafia, you quickly learn you can never let your guard down. Any snacks you have put a giant target on your back. And if you don't have any snacks, anything you own is still at risk. Some monkeys have learned to steal your camera or your phone and hold it hostage until you cough up some snacks. They are extremely clever, and sometimes it feels like they use this cleverness for pure evil. They're like small humans with small thieving hands born with no sense of right and wrong. A truly terrifying combination. Although I am mostly joking, these monkeys do present some interesting behavioral biology and even philosophical questions. If they're so smart, so organized, and live in such tight social groups, do they have some version of morality? Even for humanity, defining morality has been a philosophical conundrum for millennia. But in general, it refers to what societies determine as right and acceptable and is what enables people to live cooperatively in groups. Sometimes acting in a moral manner means individuals must sacrifice their own short-term interests to benefit others. If monkeys live in groups much like we do, do they require a similar social contract? Are monkeys capable of sympathy and compassion? And also their negative counterparts such as malice and spite? Do they have a sense of what is fair and what is not? And by looking at our animal relatives, can we learn more about our own morality, its origins, and how we came to learn right from wrong? Some sociologists argue that in order to be moral, you must have an understanding of what is fair. Without a concept of fairness, we can't make judgments about other people or decide who deserves what in any situation. Humans are certainly very sensitive to fairness. Studies have suggested babies as young as 15 months can work out when food distribution is unfair and take steps to correct this imbalance. And it turns out that at least some monkeys also have a strong sense of fairness. Brown capuchin monkeys were tested to see how cooperative they would be in a task if they found out they would not always be fairly compensated. The monkeys were asked to give their human testers a token, and in exchange, they received a treat. Some monkeys received a piece of cucumber, while others received a grape, the grape being a much tastier treat to a brown capuchin monkey. The monkeys were able to see each other and see what their neighbors were getting for their token exchange. When the cucumber monkeys saw that their neighbors were getting grapes, they became much less willing to engage in the game suggesting that they had realized they were getting a raw deal and didn't want to cooperate. In some cases, the outraged monkeys flung their exchange tokens away in frustration. Interestingly, a later experiment showed that female monkeys were far more sensitive to unfairness than male ones. These experiments can tell us how monkeys react to unfair situations, but they can't tell us exactly why they react that way. The researchers suggest it may be that monkeys, like humans, are guided by social emotions, thoughts and feelings based on expectations of how others will behave. And this ability to anticipate certain behaviors could help monkeys and humans cooperate and live in groups. But what about the monkeys getting the better deal? Do they feel any kind of guilt or empathy for their unlucky friends? Empathy is another social skill that has been argued by philosophers to be central to morality. Without understanding that others experience their own wants and needs, and without an ability to imagine what those might be, it would be hard to behave morally towards others. Do our monkey brethren share our ability to empathize? In another experiment, also with capuchin monkeys, test subjects were put into pairs and one of each pair was offered a choice of two tokens. A selfish token gave them access to a slice of apple, but meant their partner got nothing. A helpful token meant that both monkeys got a treat. The monkeys chose the helpful token more often. They didn't see any reason not to secure their friend a treat. This changed depending on how well the monkeys got to know each other. 
When the monkeys were allowed to interact and engage with their partner, they consistently chose the helpful token. But when a screen was placed between the monkeys so that they could see but not fully engage with their neighbor, they chose selfishly more often. The researchers suggested that the level of empathy the monkeys felt would depend on how well they knew their partner. Macaques have also been found to express what could be called empathy. A 2015 study placed pairs of macaques opposite one another and gave them a screen on which they could press icons that would offer the other macaque a reward or a punishment. Most of the macaques preferred to give their partner rewards in the forms of sips of juice than punishments, which were puffs of air to the eyes. When a macaque did choose a punishment for their neighbor, the scientists observed that they blinked their own eyes in response to seeing the other macaque get a big puff of air to the face. The study authors concluded that these monkeys can understand and empathize with what their neighbors are going through, and adapt their own behavior towards the neighbor accordingly. With a sense of morality comes an ability to make judgments. Humans have developed quite complicated processes for assessing if someone has done something bad. And on top of this, humans will make a special effort to punish anyone who violates a social norm, such as someone who takes resources unfairly or who does harm to others. And certain monkeys too are more than happy to punish others. In one study, capuchin monkeys were found to yank on a rope to collapse a table that is holding another monkey's food if that other monkey had stolen their food. This seems like a fitting punishment. But these monkeys didn't stop there. They also happily pulled the rope even if the other monkey simply got more food than they did. Even if it meant neither of them got any food, in an action that looked a lot like spite. And while I'd like to use this as evidence for a monkey's lack of moral compass, it's actually an indicator of inequity aversion an important feature of a cooperative society. And it's one of the most human behaviors ever observed in monkeys. Spite used to be thought to be uniquely human, but the if I can't have it, no one can attitudes evolutionary origins may be deeper than we thought. But just as monkeys can act spiteful to each other, they also seem to be capable of forgiveness. Monkeys have been seen to make up after fights, and in fact, making friends after a bust-up leaves them feeling better about themselves. When monkeys reconcile after fights, they feel better, that is, indicators for distress and anxiety, like elevated heart rate and compulsive scratching, decrease. What this doesn't tell us, of course, is if monkeys know that they are reconciling. Are they driven by a sense of morality to be fair, to be empathetic, and to be apologetic? Do monkeys act on instinct, or are they actually thinking about the feelings of their friends and family? We do have evidence that apes and some monkeys have a sense of self. The mirror or mark test is an established test that tries to prove if an animal is self-aware, that it knows it exists as an individual. An animal has a dot painted or a laser pointed on a part of their body they can't see with their own eyes, and are placed in front of a mirror. Animals that don't have a sense of self, it's argued, can't understand that the creature in the mirror is doing exactly what they do, and therefore must be themselves. They don't try to find the dot on their own bodies. Animals that do recognize that the mirror creature is performing the same actions, and therefore must represent themselves, will try to touch the painted dot on their own head. It's not as easy as it sounds. Most animals, and kids under two, can't pass the test but some monkeys can. One study demonstrated this with a laser pointer. The monkey in the mirror always touched the dot on its head. And notably, such monkeys with mirrors constantly use the mirrors to inspect their own butt. We can safely say the monkey absolutely knows it's him in that mirror. But being aware that you exist and have autonomous actions still doesn't guarantee a monkey understands that other monkeys also have a sense of self. Do monkeys know that other monkeys are their own selves and therefore should be considered in moral reasoning? A study done on Japanese macaques suggested they might have a theory of mind. The scientists used an established experiment usually used on human children called the false belief task. The monkeys were shown a video of person A placing an object in box A. 
Person A leaves the room, and Person B moves the object to Box B without Person A seeing. The scientists then measure where the monkeys looked when Person A returned to the room to gauge if they would expect Person A to look in Box A or Box B. And it turns out the monkeys looked to the original location, suggesting they understood Person A would not know the object had been moved. That is, they understood Person A had their own set of beliefs and view of the world separate to Person B and separate to themselves. However, a similar study done on rhesus macaques was less successful in showing theory of mind. So it likely differs in different species. Some researchers suggest that monkeys understand that other monkeys see, hear, and know different things than them. But they probably don't understand that other monkeys have different beliefs about the world. So if monkeys can act fairly, empathetically, and have the capacity for forgiveness, yet they don't necessarily understand that other monkeys have their own beliefs and ideas about the world, are their actions really moral? Is it morality if the monkeys aren't necessarily making a choice about how they behave? Is there any other way to explain their seemingly moral behavior? We know that moral behavior in humans can be linked to certain parts of the brain and to certain hormones that modulate brain activity. The study of morality and the brain has been coined neuromorality and is in its infancy in science terms. It often involves asking test subjects to carry out certain actions or watch videos or respond to a stimulus while having their brain activity monitored. We can see from these studies that certain neural networks are associated with assessing the intentions of others, and that these networks can interact to make a judgment about where blame lies for certain actions. We've also seen that serotonin can enhance negative feelings when we observe others enduring harm, making us more likely to be empathetic. Put simply, our brains tell us when we see something wrong, and we don't like how that feels. This could help motivate our pro-social actions. We can even see differences in how the brain responds to pain and distress in others in people who have a limited sense of morality and those who don't. In people who exhibit psychopathic tendencies, when shown a situation in which a third person is hurt, their dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, part of the brain involved in social decision-making, lit up far less than those without diagnosed psychopathic tendencies. What this suggests is that the behaviors that we generally understand to underpin morality, fairness, empathy, and justice are pretty ingrained. They are written into our brains and they are observable in our distant monkey cousins. So is it after all really morality? In perhaps his most famous book, The Selfish Gene, the often controversial Richard Dawkins suggests that altruism, doing something that benefits another at your own expense, is, when you get to the bottom of it, non-altruistic. The central argument of his book is that the gene is the ultimate unit of heritability, that all human behavior boils down to ensuring your genes are passed on to the next generation. By protecting close relatives, even at risk to yourself, you're really protecting the same genes that reside in your own DNA. Is this the root of morality? Is our so-called moral behavior just another tool in evolution's box for enabling the fittest to survive? But even if morality did indeed evolve as a simple adaptation to allow animals like us to live in groups or to pass on the so-called selfish gene, there's something about morality that seems to transcend the normal paradigms of the animal kingdom. There's a little bit of magic in the way we, or our monkey cousins, seem to have goodness in their hearts. But sometimes we all get tested or pushed to our limits. We've all been given a cucumber when our friend got the grape that we wanted. We all deal with emotions like envy, and though we like to think of ourselves as more evolved than monkeys, we get food envy too. There's always something sad about eating a bowl of cereal while watching MasterChef or Bake Off on TV, or eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich while seeing incredible food your friends are eating on social media. But luckily, we don't have to be the angry cucumber monkey. Because luckily, we can sign up for HelloFresh. Before I signed up, I always felt like I was in a cooking rut, 
with no ideas of what to make, always eating something dumb and sad for dinner. But HelloFresh takes away the complicated meal planning and delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can enjoy the delicious flavors of summer right from home. HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals. And their step-by-step -step recipes are super easy to follow, and pre-portioned ingredients help me cut out prep time and food waste, so it's perfect for weeknight meals. So to free up your time, eat more delicious meals, and to stop being the angry cucumber monkey, go to HelloFresh.com and use code RealScience16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. As always, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to watch something else right now, you can watch our latest video about the incredible smelling power of dogs. Or watch Real Engineering's latest video about one company's attempt to yeet a satellite into space.